goes up the middle. Hands in the shoulder. At the 30. Derek Brooks, 30. Brooks to the 25. He's going. Derek Brooks all the way. There it is. The dagger's in. We're going to win the Super Bowl. Yes, we we are, are the kings of the world. Yes, yes, yes. Joining us now is one of the best linebackers to ever play the game. He's a former defensive player of the year. Walter Camp, man, I mean, Walter Payton, man of the year, award winner, Super Bowl champion, fo pro football, Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the virtual breakfast table, Derek <laughs> Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, don't mind you, man. You really brought me out, Mike. You really brought me out. Appreciate the love. <laughs> hey, man, we got you, man. We put all five <laughs> people out here. So, look, check this out. Check this out, uh, Derek. Yes. Your Buccaneers are coming off a 31-15 win over the Eagles. Tom Brady threw mm -hmm. for two touchdowns, and the defense forced three turnovers. What's your biggest takeaway from that game, and were you surprised at just how dominant they looked at, you know, just how dominant this team looked? Well, I think everyone, uh, including you guys, is picked the Bucks to win. Uh, so I think winning didn't surprise me. But what I was very intrigued was the health of the defense and getting those guys back. Obviously, uh, for me, it starts with number 54, Levante David. Uh, getting the captain back in the middle of that defense just makes everything go, in my opinion. And you saw a little bit of tweaks with, with Coach Todd Bowles. He got very creative in how he was mixing up pressures and fronts, et cetera, and confused the young quarterback. And that turned into some turnovers. And I think that's the one common denominator when you look at last year's run and what they're going to have to do this year is the defense is going to have to play as dominant as they did in the playoffs in 2020. And they got off to a good start by forcing three turnovers. And more importantly, Tom Brady protected the football on offense. So they all took a good start and run, you know, and getting through the wild card weekend. And now we are just days away from the Bucks hosting the Rams in the divisional round. Tampa lost to LA back in week three, 34 to 24. Oh, we were just talking about man. it a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> well, okay, all right, but but this leads to my question. How are you feeling heading into this matchup? And do you think that week three loss will impact how the Bucks prepare this time around. I know there's some changes. They had some injuries at the time, whatever. Yes. They had some injuries now. So you you tell me, does it have any effect? Uh, it, it does in terms of preparation. And, and as I told my, my good friend, Eric Dickerson, yesterday, hey, we're talking yesteryears when that game was. That game was obviously out <laughs> in L.A. It was at SoFi Stadium, you know. All the things that that lined up for the Bucks to be upset. Well, this is not the case now. You know, obviously, this is Brady time, and that's playoff time, and they're coming here, coming home to a team right now, honestly, that's experienced for this moment. And playing the last time they played, you know, again, against them, they gave up a lot of explosive plays, as you can see, you know, right now on the screen. But this is a different defense now that's getting back healthy. And I've, I've always betting on Coach Bowles and his staff to show a, something a little bit different. And also the Rams are different. They're running the football and they're getting Cam Akers back. But the run defense has always been a strength of the Bucs since this staff has gotten here. So I'm not necessarily concerned about that. But how can Matt Stafford handle the pressure that the Bucs are going to put on him? And we have to turn those turnovers. Once we get them, we have to turn them into touchdowns. It's good analysis. Good morning, Mr. Brooks. Are you telling you me that doing? you and Eric Dickerson are... Hi! Are you exchanging like, <laughs> texts about this? Like, Are you guys trash-talking ahead of this matchup? Oh, oh yes. The Rambassador, uh, as I've called him. <laughs> 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 yes, we have definitely started the... Uh, Verbal jabs <laughs> at one another, but you know I, I'm happy to see him when he gets into town Saturday night. You know, gonna go to dinner, so I'm gonna feed him and his friend. Gonna feed him good, and then we're gonna take him down on Sunday. But yes, we're absolutely <laughs> talking trash. You better believe it. Derek, I'll be there on Saturday in Tampa, so I need to know what restaurant. Don't tell me I'm there, but I'll stop by and buy everybody a round of drinks. I will. I'll be there for the game. Uh, so you mentioned the defense and how both of these teams look different. The Rams yeah. side, they had Deshaun Jackson as 
the leading receiver in this game. Mm -hmm. They had Robert Woods, they had Jordan Fuller, and then on the Buck side, mm -hmm. a lot of that defense that was banged up returned in the Eagles' win last week. Shaquille Barrett, mm -hmm. Levante David, an absolute game record, mm -hmm. JPP among others. Who's the most important piece of the Bucks defense going into this matchup? Oh, I would say Levante David. Uh, it's a very different defense when, when he's not in. Uh, just the consistency that he brings, you know, with his play and his leadership style, it elevates everybody's play. And his skill set allows Coach Bowles to do something different when it comes to Devin White and, and, and take advantage of that young man's talent. So I, I've always said this, you know, for years, that the critical piece in that defense is Levante David, and I will say the number two piece is Vita Vea. Uh, so getting, you know, getting those two guys, guys back on defense uh, to me was very critical. But it's all going to, you know, again, start with how do, how do the Rams handle the mixed looks that Coach Bowles gives? I mean, whether it's a rundown or pass down, you don't know the four or five that's, that's going to be coming at you. And right now, they, again, last week, they did a very good job of doing that. And then lastly, I will say this, they have to keep the ball in front of them. Force Coach McVay in the Ram offense to be patient. And yes, you see a lot of Dink and Dunk and Cooper Cup catching a lot of passes, but there are times where they get impatient and take the unnecessary shots. Yeah. We got to force them to be patient the entire game right. and keep the ball in front of us. He's so right. Derek, awesome analysis. The pride of Pensacola, Florida on our show right oh, here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we look at <laughs> we look at these two teams, Rams and Buccaneers, and there's one man who straddles both franchises that'll be involved, and that's Raheem Morris. He was a young, young mm -hmm. assistant coach in Tampa when you were a player. <laughs> he was the head coach after you moved on. You guys worked together. We got word yesterday that the mm -hmm. Vikings are going to be yes. interviewing him for another head coaching opportunity. Take a moment here and let the fans at home know who is Raheem Morris, and what do you think he would make as an NFL head coach in the league in 2022? Well, I'm excited here, Peter, that he gets another opportunity to get in this position again. Obviously, he'll be a very different uh, person and head coach. When you think about it, his first head coaching job, he went from being the defensive coordinator to the head coach in a week. <laughs> you know, so and being a head coach in a week. So that was, you know, it was different from and just the whole time when they went through that transition, you know, of leadership change in Tampa at the time was, you know, it was hard. But I think now if you look at the last 10, 10 so years, you've seen him grown. He's even really coached on the offensive side of the football in Atlanta, went back on the defensive side in Atlanta. And I think he's shown now that he could be a better leader of men and he can pull the best out of the talent that he has. You think about how when Julio Jones, he was coaching him, how much more he got out of Julio. Then you think when he went to coach on the defensive side, they didn't have the necessarily talent that he has with the Rams right now, but he got the best out of him under Coach Quinn. So I think right now what you're getting is a better leader of men and someone that can relate to the players. And lastly, I will say this. He's earned the equity to be in this position and be respected by the other coaches. So now you're looking at a, a young man. I'm going to still say young man because he's younger than me. But you looked <laughs> at someone who's got off to a rookie start but earned the equity to be back in this position again and in interviewing for head coaching jobs. Yeah, DB, you, you, you hit on an element of uh, or, or something that a head coach has to have that I don't think many people truly understand. A leader of men, being able to lead grown men and have and being able to command the respect of, uh, of that locker room. But let's talk about one of your former teammates mm -hmm. and Rondé Barber. He's one of yes. the 15 finalists for the 2022 Pro Football Hall of mm -hmm. Fame class. It's the second year in a row he's made the cut in his fifth year of eligibility. Why do you think mm -hmm. Rondé deserves to be enshrined in Canton? Well, he, he fills every stat sheet and he checks every box when you talk about a Hall of Fame, Hall of Famer impact player that's deserving of that. He, to me, changed the dynamic of what the slot corner can do, going from outside to inside. And his skill set allow our defense to be a lot better when we implemented the Tampa 2. There's no Tampa 2 without Ron. His ability to 
play all three phases, whether it's man-to-man, zone coverage, sack of the quarterback, physical corner. He brought it all and was very dynamic in doing it. And the last thing I would say, which he's doing now, run and touch the end zone. He's one of the very few players, when you look at the touchdown that he's had, he's right up there with a lot of the returners, and he never played punt returner or kickoff return. So he put the ball in the end zone, obviously, when he when he got his hands on us. And to me, there's no Tampa 2. There's no success that, that I've ever had without playing beside him. So, again, I think he's deserving of a gold jacket this year. There it is. Pro Football Hall of Famer. <laughs> Derek Brooks, one of the most dynamic linebackers this game has ever seen. <laughs> thank you, brother. We truly appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of the virtual breakfast table. I look forward to doing it again. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, Derek, I'll see you not virtually Saturday night. Burns Steakhouse. Let's go. <laughs> you say you want to go Great say it on air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. Oh, well, now going. everybody's going to show up. We don't have to go there. I just Googled it. That was the first place that came up when I hit Google. Uh, but Triggs is recommend, recommending oh, it. Fantastic. Great wine room downstairs, and they've got live fish when you walk in. You can pick up one of those fish and throw it at Derek. Come on. Right. Eric Dickerson, K. Adams, and Derek Brooks at a table. Oh, Let's yes. go. Well, on I'll that. pick it off. No doubt about it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Who's better than Derek Brooks? What analysis. Awesome.